Arsenal just beat Sevilla 6-0. Big result, even though it's pre-season, they look really, really good. And there's a few interesting things that came up in that match that we can talk about and have a look at. For example, how they lined up for a start. So it's a 4-2-3-1 that we know they play mostly, um, but key additions like Gabriel Jesus have instantly made them much better. Other players who started that are new are this guy, Zinchenko, and Saliba. I know he's not new, but he's in, he was very good in this game, basically. But what we saw was Zinchenko and Ben White, because Ben White's a centre-back, right? So you might see in some things on Google that the listed as playing a back three. They weren't, they are playing a back four. But in certain phases of play, like when Arsenal were attacking, Odegaard is a 10, Xhaka in this left half space here, that's what he does, again, like attacking eight. Party would go here in the middle, and then Zinchenko and White would flank him to form like a midfield three. So it meant that Arsenal could get their attacking five, like this, so it is essentially a 2-3-5. It's the kind of shape you see like Man City, Liverpool, they do, they all sort of do this thing where you create your diamonds or your triangles between these sort of players. It means you can deal with counter-attacks at source because you're just blocking the middle of the pitch. And essentially you make it all narrow. It worked really, really well. Another thing we saw from kickoff was that Ramsdale started here. <laughs> I'm not sure they'll do that every single week, nor will that really be his position, but that was interesting to look at. But I'll show you, because here's a picture of Aaron Ramsdale starting as a playmaker, the Pirlo of goalkeeping. Here he is. He just smashed up the pitch. Very good. Well done, Aaron. Now, here's an example of Thomas Partey being flanked by Zinchenko and Ben White, those two uh, inverted fullbacks essentially coming in here. Something we've not really seen Arsenal do before. Uh, very much like Manchester City, the way they build and the way they protect against counter-attacks here. Because you see, they're very condensed. So if Sevilla were to win the ball back in this sort of situation, it'd be very hard in the counter-attack because they're so far forward that there's no real outlets and these guys could just squeeze in and stop them from there. But there are really interesting things that we saw with how Arsenal attacked. Now, we know that Arteta wants to play a high press. We know that he wants to pass the ball a lot, keep possession and patiently wait for chances to score. They're not shooting from long range often. So that 4-2-3-1 becomes like a 2-3-5 at times. But what you get is Gabriel Jesus and Saka and Martinelli constantly swapping positions. You never know who's going to turn up where. And constantly, Jesus would come to this left side but yet he was also in the box. He's essentially playing about two or three positions at the same time. So he'd sometimes start here, he'd end a move in the box here, or he'd end up here swapping one of these other guys. And the players are all just swapping naturally to make sure that they maintain the sort of shape. A bit of depth, Odegaard will drop here, maybe Saka's a bit here. And we see this in the goals that they score. Now the first goal that Arsenal score was a penalty, but it comes about from um, Arsenal uh, counter-attacking really quickly. This is a, another thing they want to work on and get better at. There was a bit of a turnover. Sevilla are trying to get back into their shape, playing a bit of a high line. And Odegaard ends up with the ball here, and he knows that he's sort of surrounded by loads of players and can't really do much because everyone's behind him. So what he does is, bides his time, dribbles a little bit and draws some players towards him because he knows that Saka is already making this run and so is the people on the left as well. They're all trying to like, get up to support him. But it's clever play. He waits a little bit and then just as Saka's getting into behind this high line, he hooks this lovely ball. Like, Odegaard's really good at this kind of ball. Just scoops it up with his left foot, lands in Saka's path, defender tracks him, knocks him down, penalty. Arsenal score it. The fun begins. The second goal, is an example of this positional rotation that we're talking about. And I think this is from the like, second phase of a, of a set piece because one of the defenders is high up the pitch, I think it's Gabriel. So you've got uh, Saliba and White are sitting here in the middle of the pitch. Other players are sort of trying to get back in position. Gabriel Jesus has pulled out to this wide left area. Now remember, he's the central striker. He's the number nine in this team. That's exactly what he is. And he scores a hat trick in this game. He pulls out wide here. Ben White receives the ball here, knows he has the option of Jesus who starts the move here, but is going to end it here and score in a goal. Now what happens is Xhaka, as we said, plays in this left half space as an eight. He makes an underlapping run as Jesus receives the ball, goes out like this. Xhaka makes the run. Other players start to sense the danger, so they start moving up. Saka, Odegaard, they're all in, in all these lads are here trying to score. Jesus pulls it down in his chest, passes into Xhaka, who comes in here. Jesus then makes this starting run, so he becomes, he starts as a left winger, ends the move as a nine, because as Xhaka gets to here, he then pulls the ball across the goal, other players attack it, defenders come back to try and deal with it, bit of a mess, the goalkeeper parries, and Jesus just runs perfectly into this path, smashes the ball in the back of the net. I'll show you exactly how it looks. We'll see this a lot this season. This is Ben White on the ball, you see uh, Jesus is over here, players coming back into shape, getting back to where they should be. The ball is then Knocked by White over to Jesus. The defender comes over. These guys start to make moves towards the box because they sense danger. Here's Xhaka starting his underlapping run to this area. Jesus takes it down. Defender comes across. Jesus passes it into Xhaka. He then makes the run. 
Xhaka continues to the edge of the box. He gets into the box, pulls the ball across the goal, like here, and here is Jesus made that run from left to here. So he's playing the central striker role and a left winger role in the same passage of play, giving Arsenal like an extra player, essentially. It's, um, it's really well done. And then Zinchenko fills in his place once he goes in like that, and that's the goal, that's how they score. Now, the third goal um, is an example of something that Arteta uses for Arsenal that loads of other managers have used in the past. What you do is you stack all your players on one side of the pitch, so your one other player on the other side is free for a switch pass. Then what the, the opposition team naturally does is shift over to deal with that, because you want to block the side of the pitch, you don't want to get overrun. It means that Jesus and Odegaard can just slightly wait on the side as if nothing's happening and then just nip in, and the ball just comes in from this side here, curled in, Jesus gets on the end, and taps in like that. So There's another example of the uh, of like a clever little tactic that Arsenal are clearly doing, stacking players to one side, switching the play to the other. It's the thing we saw Barcelona do, Bayern Munich do, with Pep Guardiola. There's Jesus, there's Odegaard, and they're blurry. Now, the last thing we should look at is how Arsenal are pressing. It's really, really impressive. They've pressed with the front four. It's a, it's a one and a three behind. Another example of positional rotation. Martinelli is now on the right-hand side. That's Saka's position. Jesus is in the middle. That's where Martinelli has spent a lot of this game so far. Sevilla build from the back, a bit shell-shocked at 3-0 down. That's not ideal for a pre-season. They did look a bit unfit, Sevilla, so this should all be taken within context. Arsenal aren't the most amazing team in the world yet. Here they are on the in, in possession. You got the ball here. Lovely stuff. Well done, guys. Now, Martinelli curves his run round to start the press. So they're just waiting for them to play the ball back. He's making sure he can't make the easy pass into here. This run curved in means that he then has to look for a different option. Jesus' positioning is superb here. He's sort of between the two centre-backs, making this pass across the goal very dangerous, but he's also, he knows this guy in between, is behind him here, will be looking for the ball, so he's just positioned himself between like the, the cross of it. So he can't make any of these passes, it's too dangerous. That's too dangerous as well, because he'll snap in and do that. The only natural pass is back to the goalie, the high press is working. Either they'll win the ball back, or the goalie will clear it, and they'll win possession back. That's the whole point of what they're trying to do here, it's the whole thing that Arteta's trying to do with this team. The ball goes back to the goalkeeper, Jesus presses him immediately, trying to watch where the ball is going, so he then has to hit it over here, because he doesn't want to hit it long. They're probably being told to keep the ball, that's what Sevilla do. His pass is poor, he's rushed it, he's under pressure. Saka reads it, rushes in, and just smashes the ball in here before the defender can even get to it. So it's an example of Sevilla being a bit slow to react. They look a bit unfit in this game, they weren't really physically ready for this, but Arsenal definitely were. So that's an example of the high press. We've seen how they're swapping positions all over the pitch, really cohesive. Tactically, they look really interesting. They can also counter-attack. So we saw the first goal was a penalty. The ball went over the top for Saka to get onto. Here later in the game, Sevilla are pushing, trying to get into it. And they're a lot deeper, Arsenal. They're really deep here. It's a turnover, they've won it back. Sevilla are out of shape because they're knackered and upset now. Xhaka steals it, runs forward a bit, and what you've got is Martinelli still ready to run in behind. And Ketty has come on as a substitute at this point. When they're sitting deep, they keep the players out wide high so the ball can go into them. But that doesn't mean the ball's going wide, it means that they can make this out to in run. So Xhaka can thread the ball through, Martinelli runs through on goal, and they score because he passes to Inketia. So, in summary, Arsenal look really, really good. I fully expect them to go wrong against Crystal Palace because that's just what Arsenal seem to do. But um, the things we've seen that haven't worked in the past from Arsenal, like having no striker in the middle, wanting to have the striker drop deep to join in the link-up play, wanting to have the striker move out wide to swap the players. It didn't work with the previous players that they had. They now have the players in place that can do what Arteta wants them to do, and they look like a real team. And I think Arsenal fans should be very excited going into the new season. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including David Ornstein, Daniel Taylor, Ollie Kay, Amy Lawrence and Rafa Honigstein. There are journalists dedicated to each Premier League team, so every fan gets the coverage they deserve, not just the big clubs. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.